Have not I said, and do not I honour my word? My word is living, and when my word lives in you, you are a living person, you become alive, and I want my word to dwell deep with inside of you, but not just a word, but an, a resurrection power and authority with my word. For my word says that you are more than a conqueror. I have given you an enabling ability to rise above all things. Yea, though you fight many battles, you have many obstacles that stay in your way, but I have given you the strength, I have given you the ability, I have given you the anointing that you can go through those doors, clear those obstacles, and come out victorious unto me. I have told you works that I have new begun, new works, old works, but all that my works are working inside of your heart. Let your heart receive. Let your heart receive and be filled. Be filled with my grace. Be filled with my presence. Be filled with my love. And be filled with my joy. For as you are filled with my joy, you demonstrate my strength, says the Lord your God. Father, I thank you again. You've spoken. Now, Father, may the hearts receive that which you have spoken and cause transformation, change in their lives, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Well, sorry. I need to put new strings on my acoustic. That's why I was playing, playing the slab. <coughs> Haven't played it for, sure. haven't played it properly for a long time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 3 9, where, you know, we, I really wish we could come up with another word than communion, not because there's anything wrong with it, but because it's, it's all got all the baggage that comes with it, you know? And a lot of the baggage is just take for granted stuff. You see a, a, a phrase in the scriptures or a word in the scriptures that Paul used quite a lot when he was writing to the churches. He talks about the fellowship. He talks about the fellowship of the Spirit, and he says, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. He says that, he talks about the fellowship of the saints together. And this time together where we remember what's happened, what Jesus has done and is now doing because whilst his work is finished yet the scriptures tell us actually he continues to do things in our behalf so there is aspects of his work which are finished and aspects of, of his work which are ongoing and those aspects of his work which are ongoing are the ones from which we continue to benefit after we have received that life that only comes by believing in him I know yeah, life, when, when, once you're part of it, when, when you join up with a group of other human beings, be it in a football team or a church, you're dealing with a whole bunch that, let, look, you're dealing with a whole bunch of people who can at times be knuckleheads. They can at times not behave themselves in a way that would uh, show that they actually really aspire to being Christ-like. People want to be until it's something might cost them. I don't mean dollars and cents, but cost us in the sense of choosing not to get offended when we could. We could take an opportunity or choosing to forgive or, or getting up to pray for someone when you wake up in the middle of the night three nights in a row with the same person on your heart type of thing. Those things they're all actually part of the fellowship of the saints and they're actually part of what goes on amongst us. And as we are fellowshipping together, like now, uh, we just do things so differently to how they used to do them in some ways. 
and that's not a, a judgment on how we do things now. There's a practicality. We, we assemble in buildings with lined up chairs and air conditioning. Everything is different. But we would come around, they would come around the table to share meals together. And they would take the opportunity that that presented to put themselves in remembrance of what they all had in common. And it wasn't their ethnicity, it wasn't the place that they were born, etc. What they have in common is that they were all believing in the name of the Lord Jesus. They all put out trust in Him for our eternal life. As often as we do this, we are remembering our Lord Jesus. But this is part of this fellowship, this communion of the saints. In 1 Corinthians 11, now know you hear it all the time. Paul says there's a reason that some people are weak and other people even snuff it among you because they don't discern the Lord's body as it should be discerned. In other words, they don't behave themselves in the body in a way that would bring glory to God and bring peace, comfort and help to their brethren, you know. It's funny how we can tolerate so much from the world and yet so often so little from our own family, talking about actual blood family, and then from our family that's born of the blood of our Lord Jesus. <clears throat> we can be kind of tolerant, but we're also past masters at superficiality. We are so good at asking somebody, hi, how you doing? Did you have a good week? And we hope that their reply is, I'm doing well, yes, I had a good week. We don't have to engage beyond, I'm, I'm just speaking frankly here, and it's mostly when I ask Matt, because I'm not interested with Matt, you know, but... <laughs> Understandable. But, as Fellowship of the Saints, you know, we, I mean, you ask people how, how they are, don't ask them if you actually don't really want to know. If that's, if that's like... It's almost like the secret password, you know, like it's almost the thing. Well, don't bother asking if it doesn't matter to you, because don't be, don't be superficial, don't be shallow. Thank you, Thank you. Reverend Randall down there. Don't, don't be shallow about it, you know. We are supposed to be brethren who love one another in spite of who the person is that we're loving, you understand, because we are decidedly imperfect. We stuff up all the time, and sometimes it's not even intentional. And we take opportunities that we ought not take, and we let other opportunities pass by which we should take when it comes to showing the love of God amongst the saints. Now, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mean Dewey and, you know, doing the flaming five-minute Pentecostal hug. You, you know what, we're not talking about that sort of stuff. <coughs> We're talking about genuine interaction because we are bought with the same blood. And it's very important. It's just, you would hear Paul saying things like, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is what the grace is what God has provided. So the provision of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and then he would say, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That's not just fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, but the fellowship that's enabled amongst believers because of the Holy Spirit. And you find that out from other things that Paul says about that. And so this fellowship which we have together is not limited to this place. I've been in many countries in the world you know, ministering and all over this nation ministering and meet people that you've never met before. And within a few moments, there is connection between you that belies the amount of time you've known them, and it's because of the Lord Jesus. It's the fellowship of the Spirit. It's what it is. I've met people, I spent, I spent weeks at a time in countries where I don't understand the language and I've had no interpreter. The interpreter would meet me at the meetings I was doing, and the rest of the time I'm living with a family, and I mean, it's a great way to learn a language. I learned a lot of Hungarian and stuff that way. But uh, what do we have in common? We love the Lord Jesus. And when, when they, and you know, we, we sit around a meal. And so it's a, uh, in, in Hungarian, you know, they tell me to, 
would you bless the meal? You know, so they go, you know, they point the food, and they go, you, know, you bless the food, you know. So you bless the food. Well, I can't bless it in Hungarian. Well, I can now, but I couldn't then. Do it in English. And everybody says, Amen. Because they, yeah, now we're, con you know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, why speak in tongues as if you're trying to communicate one another? Because you can't communicate with tongues. Because when you speak in an unknown tongue, you speak not to men but unto God. But that's just when they were being weird. But when we're fellowshipping together, we don't. Language is a wonderfully important thing. But when we all know that together we're going to bless our food, I'm speaking in a known language, and they are. There is something between us. It's a fellowship with the Spirit. There's something that's happening, and I've been blessed to experience that many, many, many times. Not just blessing food. Or have you ever met someone? You know, you're talking to them for whatever reason, and eventually. Somehow or another, someone, one of you says something, the other one says, oh, oh, you got a church or whatever. And, and, and all of a sudden, the conversation opens up, the horizon opens. Yeah, you know, of course, unless they uh, go to one of those churches that believe God went to sleep just after Jesus went back to heaven. But apart from that, you know. So as we are going to put ourselves in remembrance of the Lord, it was important enough for Paul to point out to the Corinthians that they needed to make sure that they remembered that they were part of a fellowship of believers, that God loves, paid a tremendous price for each one of us, and we don't love people because they're perfect. We love people because God loves them, and we're supposed to be imitators of Christ as dear children. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. It says, be followers, that word followers is mimetos. In the Greek, it means an imitator, one who mimics. Be mimickers of God as dear children, just like a child imitates their father, and walk in love. So that's what we do. And I feel like I need to tell someone somewhere, you need, if you've got something to sort out, sort it out. And don't sort it out in a way that you think you're going to come out looking rosy. Sort it out in a way that you think you're going to come out of it with favour with God because of how you've been. Because of fact, we humble ourselves before his mighty hand. Leave the exalting up to him. Don't exalt yourself. We all look stupid when we exalt ourselves, even if we think we don't. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Paul, would you give thanks for the, for the bread, please? And remember us, the Lord. <coughs> Jesus, I just want to thank you for all the things that were, that happened to you, how you laid your life down for us. It wasn't an instant thing. Now the hours that you suffered for us. Mm. They whipped the beat you and they they hung you out and they pierced you, and Lord. You did it for me. I know it only represents something, but we just throw our hearts before you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you for what you did for us. Yes. Thank you for the suffering so that we have someone to go to in this life. Thank you, Lord. We praise the Lord. We worship your name. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We look forward to the day when we stand face to face with you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Where we will rejoice in your presence and, and have true fellowship with you, that unrestricted by these yes, corrupted bodies. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you. our bodies benefit from what you've done for us. We bless you and thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Let's eat together. Louisa? Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, Lord. What this wine represents today, Father God, the new wine, Lord God. Thank you for our bodies, Father God, that this new wine goes into, Father God, and sinks to us, Father God. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord, Jesus. Lord, as we stand here today, Father God, that we're drinking, that this wine in the cup is just a representation of that true spirit that we're drinking today. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord Jesus, amen. Thank you.